Great, I can get you a Band-Aid. We keep a can. lot of Band-Aids around here. Maybe by the end of the video, we can get a tourniquet or something. <laughs> All right, so. If you make it, yeah. If I make it that far. <laughs> Hi, I'm Josh Ozerski for the manual. I'm here with Eitan Zayas. And uh, Eitan is the owner and proprietor here of the Portland Knife House. Also, I think the Phoenix Knife House. That's right. And he is a true master of knives, buying knives, using knives, sharpening knives. Mm -hmm. There's no aspect of knives that we can't look to you. Anything to do with knives and food. You have pretty much mostly Japanese knives, is that right? Um, either Japanese made or Portland made. I never set out to open a Japanese knife store, I just want to carry the good knives, right. and fortunately there's nobody competing with them. Well this, the I mean, mean, really, this, you got this, some of this, some very good German knives, American um, knives? Not so much, no. No, no, the, uh, I wouldn't, German knives have their place, uh, they're very durable, they're very stainless, but they don't sharpen well, they don't hold an edge well. First thing you're looking for in a blade, or what I look for in, in a blade, is that your edge goes all the way back. If you have this big hunk of metal here, right. that the only thing this is good for is just poking air holes and cans of olive oil. You mean it like goes that. all the way back to the this, tang? Yeah, it's called a full tank. But the, a know, lot of the Japanese or a knives. Full bolster, rather. You know, a lot yeah. of the Japanese, the, they're just like stuck into a, this little piece of wood. It doesn't even it goes in like an inch or the something. Japanese knives are not about the handles, they're about the steel, they're about steel and angles. So the only knives that you actually need are you need a chef knife. Okay. And, uh, eight inch is pretty much standard. If you're gonna have one knife, it should be an eight inch chef knife. And then uh, after that, I would say you would need a paring knife. And if a chef knife is everything you do on the cutting board, right. a paring knife is for everything you do off the cutting board. So it's for you know coring, peeling, uh, you, can do, you can do small work with it too, uh, but this is meant to be used in the hand pretty much. Okay. And then the third knife that you have to have is a bread knife. And the reason for this is you need a saw. If you're using crusty bread, and that's the only thing you need a bread knife for. What is this for? This is something I see sometimes. So that's called a vegetable cleaver. The reason to use one of those is that you have a lot of knuckle clearance on those in a short blade. Oh! Oop. Now see that? Look at that. Talk about knuckle clearance. So, uh, look at this. You know what? This is your baptism <laughs> of serious knife use. Apparently it did not clear that knuckle. But <laughs> <laughs> like, does the average home cook need a good knife or should they just get something that's pretty and functional? It, they should get a good knife. It doesn't have to be an expensive knife, but it needs to be a good knife. And you can get a, you can get a Victorinox Forstner for $40 and that's a good knife. It doesn't have to be one of these. The key is just get a basic piece of steel and take care of it. There's so many different steels and then there's the different ways you treat the steels. What would you say is the best steel for a good knife? Okay, I would say the best deal is one from a good maker. Okay, let's start with that. Because a good knife maker will get more out of the same steel. So I would say this, the, you'll probably get a little bit better edge retention with the stainless steels and better sharpenability with the carbon steels if you're talking about the same knife in the same grade. Do you have like a very old school, traditional Japanese knife here? One of the most popular older makers for sushi knives is gonna be Masamoto. This is called the Anagi. And this, I, that, is I hot, do use. that is yeah. a hot looking knife, yeah, I have and, to say. And for these, I do use the, you know, the Japanese names because these are Japanese knives and Japanese style knives. But for these, you really want to go carbon. And, and this, is a, this is like a slicing <laughs> knife, like a sushi so knife? So this is, yeah, any kind, of, uh, any kind of boneless proteins. Well, the moral here, I guess, is that <clears throat> there is a lot to know about <clears throat> knives. You're not always <clears throat> getting what you pay for. And <clears throat> Japanese knives, especially, or their own world, but mm -hmm. one well worth exploring. Absolutely. Especially in a great That's store it. like this one. The, I, the, thank you, I think we pick them very carefully. We try not to bring in anything that doesn't hold up. All mm -hmm. right. Well, I'm Josh Ozerski, mm -hmm. and this is The Manual. Mm -hmm.